Shalom, shalom, shalom God's people. Shalom everyone. It is a blessing for me to be here today. It's been long since I last lived, if that's how to say it. I didn't plan to come here today, but I love how God does what he, sorry. Shalom everyone. Shalom. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's been long since I filmed, even long since I've been here. We thank God for a new day. We thank God for his power. We thank God for his love. We thank God for whatever that he has for us tonight. I bless the name of Jesus. I bless the name of our Lord Jesus. It's like I was saying, hello everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Like I'm so blessed to be here. It is a blessing for me to be here. It is a blessing for me to be here to talk about nothing else, no one else but our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm here. I'm going to be very, very, very fast by the Lord's grace. I'm going to be very fast because I wasn't planning to come here today. Shalom. I wasn't planning to come here today. It was out of my plan and I received this message last week. God was, was actually talking to me last week about this. But I I didn't think it was for everybody. I thought it was for me. I thought the Lord was trying to correct me. I thought the Lord was trying to tell me something. And I didn't just want to come and speak about it. It was until today that the Holy Spirit moved me to come. And I believe God, God wants to bless someone. He just wants to, you know, to remind us of something that we don't know. That's, that's why I love Jesus. Because he, he won't just see us or leave us in the wrong way for a long time. He will just come and just drive us and take us back to the right road so we can carry on. So I am so grateful to be here. It is a blessing to be that person God decided to use today to share this message. So Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. Oh God, we are grateful to have a God like you. We thank you for being a good father to us. We thank you for being a good God. We thank you for caring and for loving and for preparing us so that we can be with you. We thank you for not leaving us in sin, but for speaking to our heart every day so we can amend our ways, so we can change our ways. Oh God, we are so grateful to have a father like you, to have a God like you. Father, thank you for using me tonight to speak to your people. So Lord, have your way speak to our heart let everything that comes out of my mouth not to be my own words but yours oh god i make myself available myself available tonight so you can use me to speak to your people bless each and everyone who will connect to this life in the name of jesus we cover this life in your blood in the name of our lord jesus christ we pray amen Whew. i'm not expecting a lot of people to be honest because i i didn't know i was coming i didn't know i would be here today so i thank jesus the Lord was speaking to me last week. God, God, God was talking to me. I, I, I think I was, I was having shower. Like the Lord was speaking to me about something. That something is important. If you know me, you should know I'm in love of salvation. I'm into holiness. I'm into righteousness. I'm into repentance. Like everything I preach, I don't just everything I say about God. Everything I preach about God, I just I don't just say things like God will bless you with money. You know, God will bless you with this. That's not me. Everything. I make myself available to talk is is always about is always it has always something to do with heaven it has always something to do with salvation it has always something to do with to do with just be, being with Jesus just meeting Jesus because I can we can pray for a blind man and the blind man can see and tomorrow if Jesus Christ comes he may not meet Jesus so what's the point of healing if we don't see Jesus at the end of the story so my number one thing, my number one thing is to prepare to meet God. So I am just so, so thankful to God for giving me such gospel. The gospel that we don't really hear every day is a blessing to be part of that road at such a young age. So for me, it's a blessing and I thank God for it every day. So today, I, I decided to, God, um, God gave me a message to, to give to us. I was like I said I was just I was taking shower I was taking shower and God was God just said he said only if you guys so God was not just talking to me God was talking about us you know as as us he said only if you can only if you can take care of your inside as much as you take care of your outside heaven will be full of souls I heard it I heard the first time the first time I heard it I was just like, what? I thought it was just me writing a song or just 
wanting to write and the Holy Spirit said it loud again only if you can take care of your inside as much as you take care of your outside heaven will be full of soul and I, I was there like I like, like if there's something i i don't i don't pretend i don't lie is about my inside you know i believe in the power of accepting who you are i believe in the power of going to god and say father i am weak i believe in the power of going to god and say father this is who i am this is the things i'm doing this is the thing i can't do i believe in just going to god and just show yourself that the way you are that's something i just can't pretend so as soon as the lord said it i knew something was wrong i knew at first, I believed something was wrong with me, and because it all starts with me. Whenever that God speaks, I take it for myself. I don't just take it like, oh, okay, this is a message God is giving me for other people. I take it for myself, and I try to study. I try to, to change, and whenever I feel like, you know what? I got my part I understand it that's when I come I just I don't just come and put it in on you guys I study as well because I believe I'm part of the people God is trying to change I haven't reached the level that I feel holy I haven't reached the level that I feel complete I haven't reached the level that I feel better than anyone I feel like I, I know and I, I think that we all on this for a reason we are all on this for a change God is changing all of us at the same time and yeah and as soon as the Lord said it I, I was thinking, I, I started studying myself, I, I started studying and I realized I had a few things in me that the Lord wanted me to change. I realized I had things in me that I was, I was holding on to and I realized I have a lot of things all over me I couldn't even see, I didn't even pay attention, I didn't know I needed change and I, I prayed, I was praying about it and God, God, God has been revealing things that I had to change. I've been revealing things I had to do, things I had to stop, and I thank God for it. I just decided to share with you. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord was speaking with so much love. The Lord was speaking with so much love. Like there are so many of us, we we are dying. You know, so, so when, whenever we go to a funeral, we, we we hear a pastor preaching. Oh, this woman, she used to be a woman of God. You know, whenever that woman of God dies, we see flowers. We see people saying, "Oh, she's with Jesus." We see people saying, "Oh, no, he's with Jesus." but only God knows the truth if we really make it and God was just telling me that so many of us we we picture ourselves as holy we picture ourselves as we have arrived we picture ourselves you know especially those who are into modesty and holiness and stuff we picture ourselves as people who are like you know we are like this we are like that but inside us we are not the people God wants us to be and God really wants us to 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 be you know like to be able to care for our inside as much as we caring for our outside you know our outside has to do with our flesh but our inside has to do with our soul I'm gonna repeat again our outside has to do with our flesh but our inside has to do with our soul and God wants us to take care of our inside and i'm gonna say never ever 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 think like think oh okay because i i, I dress like this because i speak like this because i i have the anointing because i have like i have this and that never even think never ever think because i i can do this because i can do that that i am safe God can still use you i, I was talking to uh, to to someone i was like you know what you can build a house you can build a house and yet sleep outside. Like you build a beautiful house. The house is yours, but yet you don't have the key to go inside. And God doesn't, God doesn't want us to be the people who build a house and not enter, not live inside. That's why the Bible says only those who endure till the end will be saved. It's not just, it's just not the, the matter of now, but it's the matter of the end of the story. Do you take care of your inside? Some, so many of us, we are fighting with unforgiveness. We are fighting with bitterness. We are fighting with masturbation in the secret. We are fighting with pornography in the secret. We are fighting with anger in the secret. We are fighting with lies in the secret. But yet, we, we, we don't want to do anything about it. We feel like, you know, we feel like, you know what, it's cool. You know, we have people, they, they will masturbate now and go out, go the next minute and share the word of God. They, they will watch porn to, right now and then go out there and preach the word of God. You know, like if you're doing that, if you are that person that the Lord is speaking 
to today that the Lord is calling you for a change. You know what I love about Jesus? What I love about the Lord? He, he makes sure to tell us to leave something behind. He makes sure to tell us to, to, to stop the things that we're doing. He makes sure to call us for a change so that one day when we stand before him, we know we're, gonna, we're not going to have any excuse. Do you look out of your inside as much as you do with your outside? Do you really take time and sit down, just look in the mirror and say, this person is the person that I don't want to be? Do you take time, you know, I, I have issue with forgiveness. I had issue with forgiveness. This is something that was a very big part of me. This was something that was holding my ministry back. This was something that was holding my relationship with God back. I knew it. I knew it. I forgive people, but it takes time for me to forgive. And I remember, sorry, I remember when God called me, the first thing that God told me was, you're going to have issue with forgiveness. So you need to work on your forgiveness. And I've been working on forgive my, 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 my forgiveness. Sometimes it can be hard. Sometimes it takes time. But then the Lord can see I am trying. Every day I go on my knees, I ask for the, the Lord's help. Every, go, every day I go on my knees, I ask for the Lord. I if I can show you my list, I have the list of the thing I want to give up. I have the list of the things I want to start doing. I have the, I, I do look after myself. I know my weakness and I don't hide it. I take it to the Lord and I say, Father, I need a change. I take it to the Lord and say, Father, this person I know is not the person you want me to be. I need a change. But today we have people, we have women of God, we have children of God who are okay with the things that they should not be okay with. Who are actually living the things that they should actually kill. Who are actually enjoying the things that they shouldn't enjoy. Anger is not part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Lies is not part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Unforgiveness is not part of the fruit, the fruit of forgiveness. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. They are not and they cannot be part of us. You know, it's crazy how we, how we just see the glory of God all over us and we think we are safe. The, the devil can actually let God use you and, and lock you in that one sin that you can't let go of. I'm going to repeat myself. The devil is capable of allowing God to use you and just close and just lock you inside one sin you are fighting with. Never be ashamed of of saying who you are to God, like just go to God and say, Lord, this, this is me and I'm weak. The Bible says the angel was fighting with Jacob all night. And as soon as he wanted to go, Jacob didn't want to leave him. And before he left, he asked Jacob, who are you? Who are you? He asked Jacob, who are you? And the Lord is asking many of us, who are you? And whenever God tells us, who are you? is for us to tell him the truth. Imagine if, like, I say this a lot, but the last time Jacob lied, he lied by using another person's ID. He lied by hiding the person that he was. He lied by hiding his weak weakness because he knew with this ID, I won't be blessed. With telling, if I tell my father I'm Jacob, he won't bless me. If I tell my father I'm Jacob, he won't do this and won't do that. So the first time that Jacob got a blessing was by lying to about his identity it was by lying about the person he was but that the next time when god asked him who are you tell me who you are so i can bless you he has to tell the person that he was he has to tell god and by saying to the lord i am jacob he meant lord i am a liar he meant lord i am a bad person jacob means no good but yet he couldn't hide it before the lord jacob means a stealer a liar jacob means all the bad thing but before the lord he has to tell the lord the truth so he can get his blessing he had to tell the lord the truth so he can be changed so he can be changed sometimes it only takes the truth it only takes us the truth. It only takes our truth to the Lord to be able to tell the Father, this is who we are. You know what, Lord? I'm finding it hard to forgive. Lord, I'm finding it hard to let go. That person really hurt in my life. That person really did this. Really they really made me cry that person really betrayed me lord this is who i am i'm not able to forgive this person this 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 is the thing that the lord is expecting us to do to just tell him 
tell him this is who i am and as soon as you say it, that's how you see the change the only reason that is even hard for the lord to change us to actually teach us how to forgive to actually teach us how to love is because we are lying even before the eyes of god god can see i'm a liar god can see i can't forgive god can see i, I am watching pornography god can see i'm masturbating myself god can see all the bad things i'm doing and he's actually waiting for you to just come and tell him so he can change you only if we can take care of the inside as much as we take care of the outside heaven will be full of soul heaven will be full of soul there are so many people they died they, they, like they died they used to serve god they die and as soon as they die they couldn't even see the savior for that one sin that was holding them behind for that one sin that was holding them behind for that one sin that was calling their name louder I'm going to say it again. The devil can actually allow the, the Lord to use you. To have the anointing. To pray, to pray for the sick people. To deliver people. To prophesy. To speak in tongue. Yet put you in the prison. Under one sin. And he knows that one sin will stand against you. On the judgment day. Do not be okay with the sins. Do not be okay with the things that you know is wrong before the eyes of God. Do not feed sin. Do not feed sin because the food, the sins that you're feeding today will take you to hell. I don't know who God is talking to, but I feel like he's talking to you, he's talking to me. Because all of us, we are fighting with that one thing. Paul says, I kill my flesh every day every day i didn't just kill myself once forever no this is everyday battle we kill our flesh every day and we must kill our flesh every day it's not a matter no jesus christ killed it for me ah that gospel would take many to hell you have to kill that part of you you know yourself you know the word of god you know lying is bad you know thinking bad is bad you know you can't feed the lie that's why it's, that's why it's, if something is wrong i call it wrong i don't explain my sins i don't explain my weakness i don't explain my mistake if it's a sin i'll come and say it is a sin take care of your inside as much as you take care of your outside do not fake it because when you fake it, you're not faking it for the people who are watching you. You're not faking it for God. You're faking it for yourself. Because one day you stand before the Lord to give an account of everything you did on earth. You stand before the Lord to explain. To explain your ways. To explain your lies. To explain your sin. You stand before the Lord, the throne of grace, to explain it. And the time, the day of salvation, the hour of salvation is now. And the Lord is calling all of us to prepare. You know, we're getting into the last day. We're getting closer. The day is working harder than never before. If the Lord opens your eyes to see the things that is, the thing that the devil is preparing, the thing, the plan of the devil, you won't even sin. You won't even think of the things that you think of. You won't even lie. You won't even hate your neighbor. You, you will do all the things right because you know the time is close. We're getting closer every day. Every day we're getting closer to see the Lord. There are so many people that woke up today as we're speaking. <laughs> heaven is calling the name. There are people that woke up. There are people five minutes ago, they were just fine singing, dancing, eating, wanting to, 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 to go to church tomorrow, having planned. They even planning to repent tomorrow. They even planning to, 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 to fix with God to, tomorrow. But heaven called the name and that person can be you. Heaven can call my name right now. Heaven can call your name right now. Where would you go? Would you stand before God righteous? Would you stand before God blameless? Would you really? And the Lord is calling us to check, to check ourselves and to be honest to ourselves. Salvation is not, is not a joke matter. Salvation is, it, it actually, it is serious. Salvation is serious. It's something that you and I, we cannot play with. We can play with everything else. We can, you know, we can play with everything else, but we can't play with our salvation. And it is time to fix our lives. It is time to, to study. You know, sometimes I study myself. Sometimes I study myself. I have the list of the people I can't forgive. And I pray for them. I pray for the love. I pray, I pray for the care. I pray for it. I pray for it. I pray for it. And the Lord is calling us to build our inside. To build our inside. To stop pretending. To stop pretending. To stop pretending that we are the people that we are not. To stop pretending 
God is calling us to stand. God is calling us to change. God is calling us to, to be holy as he is. God is calling us today to just go to our room and say, Father, this is who we are. Father, this is who we are. We need that change. We need that change because you're coming soon. You're coming for those who are ready. You're not just coming for anyone. You're not just coming for the whole world. You're coming for those who are ready. Am I really ready? Is my name, sometimes I ask myself questions, is my, is my name in the book of life? You know, sometimes I don't doubt my salvation, but sometimes I need to sit down and be honest to myself. Is my name in the book of life? And if I can tell myself it is not, then there must be a change. There must be a change. There must be a change. So this, this is the message that God gave me. Like I said, I won't take time. And I didn't really plan, sorry, I feel, I feel sometimes. I didn't even t take time to prepare. I just, I just came and I love how God is. I love how he cares for us. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord is, is, is good. The Lord cares for us. The Lord is trying every day to make sure that we don't go out of, out of his way. We don't, we don't just, you know, we don't. He's making sure to, he's making sure that every day we are ready. Every day we are ready, you know, like we are ready, we are ready. And the question tonight is, are you ready? If Jesus Christ comes today, would you make it? If you die today, would you make it? Just take a look at yourself, look inside your heart. Who is in the prison of your heart? Who is that person you're not being able to forgive? Who is that person you're not being able to forgive? Again, I don't know why God is talking about forgiveness tonight. I don't know why the Lord is keep talking about forgiveness tonight. Who is that person who really hurted you so bad that you cannot forgive? Just take a look. Who is that person that you cannot let go? You know, we all deal with it. I had to deal with it with my own mother for years. I'm not ashamed. I'm ashamed of saying that. For years, I couldn't forgive my own mother. For years, I couldn't. I was eating with her, but I didn't have the love. I didn't love the. I didn't have that love for her for years, and I didn't know how. And if I die in that situation, hell was waiting for me. And you have to take a look inside your heart. Who is that person? The Lord said we should love. You know, <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Someone asked me, "What is love to you?" Love for me is eating with someone who I know for sure the person doesn't like me. Love is loving the person. I know for sure that person hates me with passion. Love is being with that someone, being loving them back even if they don't love me. Because Jesus Christ did the same. Jesus Christ was eating with Judas. Jesus Christ was eating with Judas. And he knew this person is going to, to, to sell me. This person is the person who's going to give me away. Yet he was eating with that person. That's love. Love is eating with the person you know that person doesn't like you. Love is eating, being able to love the person who doesn't love you that's love that's the love jesus christ is asking us today and do you have that love love is telling peter in you i'll build my church even though i know you will deny me love is telling peter again in you i'll build my church knowing that you are the one who's going to betray me why why not just pick john because john is going to follow me to the cross why not build my church with John, because John is the one following me to the cross. Why build my church on someone who is going to betray me? You know, when we read the Bible, we need to, we need to take a look and just try to, to see what is going on. How can I pick the person who is going to deny me? To build my church? To build my church? I could pick John, you know, if there's somebody, like, you know, if we try to be fair here, the person, the Lord should have used more what was going to be John. Like, come on, that guy followed him on the cross. He followed me, followed him all the way. But now nah, 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 I'm going to build my church on somebody. The person is going to betray me. That's love. That's love. Do we love enough to still to keep praying for the people who hurt us? Do we love enough to keep loving those who don't love us? Do we love enough? And these are the things we see small. These are the things we don't really pay attention to. These are the things we don't really care about. These also are the things that will make us miss heaven. Because God is love. As hard as it could be, we must love. And God, like we always say, we see it everywhere that God will never give you something that he knows you can't carry. If the Lord can tell us we should love, it's because he knows we can love. Because our father is a father of love. A lion can only give birth to a lion. <laughs> a lion can only 
child a lion. And because it's love, we have that love. And the devil, most of the time the devil try to, you know, to take that love away from us. From us, God is talking about forgiveness. So many people here today, you're dealing with unforgiveness. And the Lord is calling you to repentance. So many people today, you're watching here now, you're dealing with unforgiveness. There's that one person, that two, that three people, you don't talk to. You don't even, you know, whenever you see that post, you hate them. Whenever like, you, hear the, you hear the voice, you don't. It can be your ex. It can be someone you loved from the past. They didn't love you back. It can be anyone. And God is calling us today to let it go. To free ourselves inside and outside so we can be with him. May God bless us for today. May God bless us for today. And I pray that we are going to. We are going to. To build our inside. We are going to build our inside. Sorry, my scarf keep coming down. We are going to build our inside. Our inside must be pure as our outside. And our outside must be pure as... I don't believe in the gospel that God looks inside the heart. Like, come on. It looks in everything that we do. The Bible says a tree that will not bear fruit will be sent to fire. The fruit doesn't come from the inside. The fruit... We can't see the fruit of the inside. Only we see the fruit outside. A tree doesn't bear fruit inside. It bears fruit outside. And the Bible says the tree, a tree that will not have fruit will be sent to fire. You where are your fruit. Our inside must be clean as our outside. The, the Lord is coming soon. The Lord is coming soon. Most of the time when we speak about death, people say, in the name of Jesus. You know, when I speak about death, people go crazy. Stop, especially my mother. You're not going to die now. I'm just like, I don't care when. I don't care how. What matter is if I make it. Because babies are dying. They're, they are innocent, more pure than me. They are dying. It's not a matter of when. It's not a matter of I'm young. Jesus Christ died at 33. You know, if God decide, if God created me and said, Blanche, you're going to serve me for, 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 for 20, 28 years, then I'm fine with 28 years. It's not about living longer here. It's about making it over there. You can live here for years, for billion years and ye for years, yet not make it there. And you can live here for 33 years, yet be there with him. And what matters the most is to be there and ask yourself this question. Am I going to make it if he calls my name right now? Am I going to be welcomed in heaven if my name is called now? Is the Lord going to receive me? Is the Lord going to hug me? Is the Lord going to be the, are the angels going to sing glory to the Lord, Hosanna to the Lord? Or oh, hell is going to torment me. And that decision depends on you. And the day of salvation is now, is right now. And it is for you to take that decision. No one can do it for you. Jesus Christ paid the price already. It's now on you. That's why he said there are two ways. You pick one because there was only one way. But when I came, I opened up the other way. The other way is open. It's easy. It's just for you to accept. It's just for you to accept. And the Lord today is calling us all to accept his way. Because there's only one way that leads to heaven and that's the holy way the righteous way the way of the lord jesus christ and you cannot go to the way of the lord jesus christ if you're not like him the bible says whoever who wants to follow me should carry the cross deny themselves carry the cross and follow me you know deny yourself is denying you know that pride you know you know that spirit that unforgiveness drop it you know that anger drop it that's denying refusing that person that you think you are refusing that body that you think belongs to you refusing that old person that you think belongs to you and just deny so you can have the body of christ so you can have the identity of christ so you can have the spirit of christ deny yourself carry your cross carry your cross means to carry any burden carry your cross means to carry everything that you know the christ the cross is heavy Jesus Christ didn't have to carry the cross, but he did. And when the Bible says carry your cross, the Bible says just carry it. Even if even if you didn't you did nothing to them, but they're hurting you, carry them. Even if even if they are just they're just doing this for you for nothing, just carry it. Even if the life is like this, the Bible says it doesn't matter if you deserve it or not. By saying carry your cross, God is actually teaching us it doesn't matter if you deserve it or not. If it doesn't matter if it's, if it's for you or not, just carry it and follow me as I carry the cross that didn't belong to me. You also carry whatever that comes your way because 
my way leads to glory my way leads to glory my way leads to glory and that road that jesus christ asks us to carry to deny and to follow is the only way that leads us to heaven it's the only way that leads us to the glory as Jesus was going, as he was going with the cross, as the cross was heavy, it was getting heavy, and as it was getting tired, he needed water, no one, no one offered him water. He needed to rest, no one wanted him to rest. He needed to sleep, no one gave him time to sleep. He needed to speak, he couldn't. And the Lord is actually asking us if we can just be like him. You know, most of the time we try to defend ourselves. Most of the time we try to speak back. You know, when people are saying things, we want to speak back, we want to explain ourselves. And the Lord is actually teaching us today, if we can just shut up. Let me, sorry for the word. If you can just shut our mouth and just, just, just look, look, the, look, just look forward. Just, just look forward. As, just follow the way of Jesus Christ. Just follow the way of Jesus Christ. Just follow the way of Jesus Christ. Again, follow the way of Jesus Christ. The Lord is calling someone today. It may be you. It may be me. To look and to want that change. To build that character of the child of God. To be that character of the child of God. To be that character of the child of God. So many of us, people can't even tell if we are Christian or not. People can't really call, tell if we are children of God or not. That's an issue. You know, something is wrong with us. If someone can doubt who we are, if the Bible says <laughs> the only reason people could tell Peter was with Jesus was because of his, the way he spoke. The only way people could tell Peter was part of Jesus is because people could see, nah, this one is talking like him. The, the people has to see, but today they don't see us. The only way people know that we are children of God is when we post it. The only way people know that we are children of God is when we say we are Christian. People cannot tell who we are. That's an issue. Most of the time, Jesus Christ never told people, I'm a child of God. People used to say, they were confused. They couldn't even tell because it, it was written all over him. The way he spoke was differently. The way he acted was differently. And Jesus Christ wants us to be like that. When someone sees you, they need to see the glory of God. When people see you, your outside must come the inside must come outside. People need to see Jesus all over you. People need to see the glory of God. People need to see the fear of God. You know, I, I, I go to school. I go to uni with different. My friends, I have a friend who is Muslim. I have another friend who is nobody and all that. And most of the time, I decide to sleep at uni. Whenever I'm there, they know they can't use bad language. I never told them not to. They know they can't play worldly music. I never told them not to. You know, sometimes I just stay over. Like this year, I was I was not staying at uni. I was I was actually staying at home because I was trying to save the money. So whenever that I had exam, I had to go to uni. And I was sleeping at one of my friends. She's a Muslim. So I was sleeping at her. Like, she's open. I talk to her about Jesus. She wants to know and stuff. And I thank God for that grace. And whenever I'm there, there are things she won't do. Because I'm there, I, I will never tell her anything But because that's her house. But there are things she won't do because she knows who I am. Do people around you know who you are? I live in the house, I live with my brother, I live with my dad. They are not, they are not, they are not like into God like that. They can only play the world new music when I'm not around. Whenever I'm in my room, they know I'm here. They don't. And you need to get to that level. The level that you don't even say anything. People just look at you and know they are different. People just know, look at you and know that you are the child of God. And that's what God wants. They just see you and they see, mm -mm, this, this, she's not like everybody. It's not like everybody. This is like Deborah. This is like Sarah. They just try to compare you with the people in the Bible. Why? Because you are the, you are the child of God. And these are the things God wants. So God is calling us today to repent. Repentance. Into repentance. Prepare yourself to meet the Lord. Prepare yourself to meet Jesus Christ. Prepare yourself to meet Jesus Christ. There's nothing else I can give you. I can't give you more. I can't I can't come and just preach to you about blessing and all that. I can't just come here and preach to you about things that will stay here. I'm going to come and talk to you about the things that will last you forever. And that thing is salvation. I'm preaching you about repentance today. I'm telling you about repentance today. Repent and make sure your ways are right before the Lord, before it's too late. Don't say you'll do it tomorrow. So many people yesterday, they decided to do it today, but they didn't wake up. So many people today, they're planning to do it tomorrow, but heaven just called the name. So many people, people are dying every day. Things are happening every day. We didn't know Corona was going to come this year. And look at us this year. We are all in this mess. We didn't know. No one knew. Not even the biggest people in the world, but Jesus knew. 
So many people died in sin. So many people died without knowing. But you and I, the Lord is keeping us longer. And don't, don't think God is going to wake you up for fun. Don't think God is going to wake you up so you can go to work. Don't think just God is just going to wake you, wake you up so you can, you can go shopping. Don't think that God is just going to wake you up so you can dress up. Don't think that God is just going to wake you up so you can just have a, you know, a lazy day. God is waking you and I up so we can fix our ways. Do not think that those who died yesterday, you're better than them. No, you're not better than them. It's just because God is giving you more grace to repent. God is giving you more grace to change your ways. God is giving you and I more time so that we can fix our ways because he loves us so much that he wants us to make it to heaven he loves us so many times so much that he wants us all to be with him and god is calling you today this is not a matter of fun this is not a matter of a joke this is a serious matter we need to fix our ways to god because once you close your eyes it is finished so many people in the torment places they are wishing they're screaming right now give us another chance and the door is closed the door the door of grace is closed and the door, that door that is closed to others, is open to you and I. That door is closed to many people in the torment places right now. It's open to you and I. It's open to you and I tonight. So we can just go and fix. So we can just go and fix. I don't know the sin that is all holding you back. Like I said... If there was, there was that one sin that was holding me back and that's still fighting, I'm still, I'm still fighting his, um, his forgiveness. And you need to find it. Even if it means you're listing it. You know, if you can list, list all the sins, list all the people you can't forgive, list all the things you can't give up. If there are things you don't understand, list them. Like, don't take it for granted. If you don't do it, no one else can do it for you. If you don't check yourself, no one can check it for you. If you don't look at yourself and see what is wrong with you, you will live a life thinking you're right with God. And at the end of the day, the last day you get to the Lord, you get to the door of heaven, and the angels are telling you your name is not written and the time to check it is now just write it down write everything that you want to give away write everything that you want to change write it down and take it to the lord say father i cannot do it by myself i cannot do it by myself i need you and just start praying one by one this is how my change started i had to be honest to myself i had to look in the mirror i had to look in the mirror and i had to write down and i was praying one by one i was i was saying the lord i was praying in tears i was saying this person is not the person you created me to be this person is not the person i want to be and this person is not the person you want me to be but i don't know how to separate myself from this person i don't know how to separate myself from these things i don't know how to give up on this i don't know how to give up on that father please teach me how and the more i was going to the father the father could see i was willing to the father could see i was willing to the father could see the bible says if you are willing you can the bible can see i was willing god knew i wanted a change god knew i wanted to be the good person god knew i wanted to be a good child and he had to come in the Bible says it's looking for the heart. It's actually knocking. And if you're open, it will come out. And the Lord is knocking in the door of our heart. So many of us, we've been locking the door, the Lord outside. The Lord Jesus Christ has been standing outside of your life for years. The Lord Jesus Christ has been standing outside of your life for years. And he has been standing outside of your life for years. And today, he wants to enter. Today, he want to make a change. And only if you allowed him to. Because he will never force himself on you. He will never force himself on you. He's actually knocking your door today let him in so you can have the change that would change your life forever god bless you for today god bless you thank you for your time thank you for being here so you can listen to the small that god has for us today for those who came late i the aim of this video was to share to share a message that god gave me last week the lord was telling me that so many of us we we are taking care of our side outside and we are not taking care of our inside like the way we dress the way we speak the way we preach the way we do this and that because we go to church we, you know so many of us we are painting that we are saved but inside we are dying so many of us that we are feeding our flesh but our soul is dying so many of us we are feeding our flesh but our soul is already in hell you know like there was a day god told me something the lord was saying there are people they are living on earth but their name is written in, in the torment places you know the same way that you're here but you're 
your name is written in heaven is the same way you're here and boy your name is written in hell and there are so many people today even though they call themselves children of god even though they call themselves servant of god they think the name is written in heaven but the name is written in hell why because they are the the things that will not glorify the name of god you cannot make heaven if you have a sin on you unless you are 100 percent pure before the lord you will not because heaven is a holy place it doesn't take sin it doesn't take any rubbish that's one of the reasons lucifer was kicked out of heaven because he was not pure what makes you think you make it to heaven with the sins all over you even if you prophesy what makes you think you make it to heaven with the sins all over you even if you speak in tongue what makes you think you make it to heaven with unforgiveness in you with anger in you with lies on you with fornication with masturbation with pornography on you what makes you feel that makes you think you will what makes you think you will what makes you think you will abhoshaya? What makes you think you will? Unless you're holy. And it is possible to be holy. It is possible to be holy. If people like Moses, if people like Paul, if those who made heaven could make it, you and I can because we are human. If the other human was able to make it, you and I can. Stop making excuses that I can't be that holy. You can live a holy life. It is possible to live a holy life it's just because we don't want to it is possible to live a life that pleases the lord it's possible to live a life that the lord will, will see you and clap it is possible to be able to live a life that every day you go to bed the lord is proud of you it's possible to live that life but we make excuse every day every day we feel like nah no one can be holier than god no nobody can we make excuses and that's the lies that the devil has been feeding us to think that we can't be that holy. Yes, we can. If the Lord say without holiness, no one can see me, that means we can be holy. If people are making it to hell, you and I can. And it depends on us. The decision lies with us. The decision lies with us because the, the work of the Lord has already done. The Lord has done a bigger part of us. He has helped us a lot. He, he keeps helping us. And it is our decision tonight. Check yourself. Check yourself check yourself check yourself again check yourself and be honest to yourself to the father to the father because there will be a day this video will play the lord will play every words that he gives to his servant the lord will play everything that is toward his servant to share with you that you took for granted one day the lord will play it because it's not my words it's the lord's word do not see me here as I see, i'm sitting here i'm talking do not feel like i've arrived hi myself i had to pray about this hi myself i'm going to my, my repentance week of prayers i'm going through it i myself i am i am that person who still have things on me that i have to give i still have that part of me that i'm fighting with i still have that part of me that i had to give up i still have that part of me that i'm weak i am still on it this journey you're not by yourself do not be ashamed of yourself i'm gonna tell you something I'm going to tell you something. Whenever that you share your sins with someone. Like, I don't know how to put it together. So there's most of the time whenever I can't give up on something. Whenever I'm fighting with a sin. Or whenever I'm, I'm, I'm fighting with a side of me that I'm weak. The one of the way I can actually give up on it is talking to someone about it. Going to someone that the Lord is going to direct me and speak to that person about it. Because what the devil does is actually, it makes us feel guilty of the sins. It makes us want to hide that sin, you know, to feel bad about it. And every sin that you feel bad, every sin that you feel ashamed of, every sin that you try to hide, that sin doesn't really go that quick. Because you'll be holding, you'll be doing it in a secret, you keep doing it and keep doing it. But every sin that you share with the person that if God directs you to share, everything that every time that you share, I have a friend of mine who trusted me with her be, with her not being able to to stop masturbating. You know, that's a sin that so many people won't come clean with. That's something that so many people won't just talk. And the devil actually made us hear that if I say I'm masturbating, people see me as a demon, yet I'm a Christian. So the moment that she decided to speak, the moment that we started talking about it, it became normal. It became something that she wasn't ashamed of anymore. She was saying, she was shouting the prayer, and the Lord delivered her. She, she, she's been delivered. Why? Because she didn't want to, to be shy. And she just exposed the devil. You know, like, the devil is actually, actually trying to put in the prison of something. And you expose. You say, okay, I do it. 
but I don't want it. You know, I've been doing it, but I don't want to do it anymore. So that's just one one way I also get away of certain things. And uh, I love the Lord every day. He revealed to us the things that we shouldn't do, the things we should do. And I thank Him for that. So God bless you for today. I don't know if anyone has a question. It's always good to ask in case you do. Do you have a question about what we just said? Do you have a question before I go? Do you have anything you want to ask? Anything I say you didn't understand? Everything you want to say further? If you have it, you can just... You can ask a question before we go. Do you have a question? Do you guys have a question? And uh, by the way, because I, I spoke about me not being able to, to forgive easily, quickly. How do I forgive? I I try. I try forgiveness. I grew up, I grew up as a child when growing up, I had so many things. I, 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 I had issue with my heart when I was 11. I had the issue, you know, that sickness, that heart sickness, only only grandpas and grandma was gonna have because they had a lot going on to their life i had it when i was 11 because my childhood wasn't a good one you know i i, I had a broken heart my heart was broken when i was a child my heart, my heart was broken by the people god gave them to gave me to them to love me so it created something i came to god i was inside was damaged when god called me my inside was completely damaged i I didn't have a love for for anyone apart from my dad and my, my brother i didn't really feel the love i was scared to love i was scared to to be accepted i, I just i don't know how to explain it and he he, he he actually locked me not to forgive you know and he forgiveness became something that i, I would never do you know it was hard it was hard and like i would say when god called me the first thing god told me to do was like learn how to forgive god has to teach me how to forgive and God has been teaching me how to forgive. Sometimes it's hard, especially if someone hurt me, the person that I never believe it will hurt me, the person, the people that I never thought it will, whenever I get hurt by them, it takes time for me to forgive. But then, I don't just sit down and just feel like nothing is wrong with it. I go to God and tell God, you know what, I'm finding it hard to forgive this person, and God will direct me. Sometimes I'll pray for the person. Sometimes I'll try my best to speak to the person. You know, I, I'll try my best to, to show that I forgive and to practice love, to practice forgiveness. That's how I forgive. But then I, I'm not okay with it. I'm still working on it, and I know so many of us, we are. And the good thing is God can see us still working on it. God can see I go to Him every day, and I'm getting there. This is a process, you know. It would be bad if you have it and you're okay with it but if you're not okay with it and you pray for it and you're trying by the help of the holy spirit then god is going to help you so right now god has been delivered that god delivered me and now i'm fine things is going the way it is going and yeah you're not alone you know you're not alone it's just about you knowing the weakness you knowing what needs to be changed you knowing what needs to be done you are accepting that you are it. You are accepting that this is these things that these are the things that God doesn't want. You are accepting that you are accepting it. You know, you are accepting it. You're accepting this is wrong. This is the things I want to leave. This is the things I want to do. And just ask God to help you with it. So this is what God had for had for us today. Please keep being raptured. Like I would always say, keep preparing yourself to meet Jesus. Keep knowing every day that you wake up, just ask Lord, what do you want me to do today? What are your plan today? Every day, check out of your salvation. Salvation is something that we work on every day. Every day you wake up, check, see the things you did yesterday that needs to be changed. See the things that you're doing today that needs to be changed. And just pray on it and just, if you're willing, you can, obviously. God bless you. Thank you for being part of this life. I said I won't take time because I had things to do. But I just wanted to share what God has for us today. Please share this video because I know God is going to bless anyone else out there as well, not just you. It is a blessing for me to be here. So another thing I have to say is, God, by God's grace, we're going to have one week of prayer and fast. Seven days. It's going to be, the fast is going to be from 6 to, from uh, from 6 p.m. to, what, what what was it again? Sorry, for me. I'm just looking at the clock. I'm not going to be tired. From 6 p.m. to 
six in the morning so we're gonna have the prayer the prayer is gonna be the prayer the week of repentance so we're gonna have a week of repentance the prayer is gonna be at 6 a.m for seven days for seven days we'll be meeting at 6 a.m six in the morning or oh, first we're gonna have a prayer i don't know i'm planning to see when but uh, i just have to have my own prayer before having a group prayer with everybody so it depends on how how i start when i start mine so this is something that the lord put in my heart to to pray with everyone it's going to be a repentance week we're going to be fasting together we're going to be praying together we're going to be sharing together it's the first time i'm doing something like for, for for a group of people it's the first time i'm exciting and just prepare yourself i know the lord will do great things the lord will do great things and uh by god by the, god, the grace of god if god allow we're going to have few people that god's so god's going to direct me to 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 lead a prayer with us to share the word of god with us if you need more details just let me know i will send it across but yeah please 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 please, please. i'm begging you in the name of god i'm begging you look after yourself i'm begging you in the name of god look out of your salvation do not let anything else or anything hold you back do not let any sin hold you back do not feel so comfortable with sin do not feel okay with a bad life yeah do not feel like you you know look after yourself look out of your salvation check take take care of yourself take care of yourself take care of your salvation again take care of your salvation just know that god is waking us every day so we can fix our way heaven is real heaven is real hell is real people are making it to hell every day people are making it to heaven every day and if you will go to heaven or if you decide to go to hell i mean going to heaven going to hell this depends on you because jesus christ have completed the work and now it is up to you it is up to me if i go to hell it has nothing to do with jesus if i go to heaven <laughs> it's my decision how i live my life will actually tell where i'll go how do you live your life? Is your name written in the book of life? Is your name written in the book of life? Is your name again written in the book of life? Thank you so much. I think. Yeah, I, I, I'll send more information. I think I'm going to make a, a small fly. I'm going to share it, I think, tomorrow. I need, I need, I need a date. I'm going to make it, I think, tomorrow or, or Monday. But please be there. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. The Lord is going to do great things. I believe and I trust God. And yeah, God bless you. So I think I have to say bye.